please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to ask for a motion under Rhode Island General Law 42465A1, Job Performance, Character, Physical and Mental Health, Superintendent's Goals Evaluation, and Rhode Island General Law 42465A2, Legal Advice Litigation, to move into executive session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Ask for a motion to continue uh, executive session until after open session. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay, uh, we will report out on uh, executive session after completion. So we are now back in open session. I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the. Con has anyone signed up for open forum? Okay. I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? I have a question. Could we? Um, so I'm gonna is there a motion to that effect to pull off correspondence and student reports is there a second all those in favor okay there's now also a motion to approve did we have a motion to approve the consent agenda Okay, all those in favor? Dr. Sanchioni. Under uh, personnel action, we had a retirement uh, vice principal secretary at the high school, Ms. Ellie Byrne. Oh. Well, that's that. Well, Ms. Byrne's not here, but thank you, Mrs. Byrne, for your yes. years of service. Yes, we'll, uh, yes. we'll recognize her in the spring with the oh, uh, retirement perfect. ceremony. Okay. All right, so we are up to item 12, policy development, revision, and review. We're we gonna do the are we things going? that were pulled. Okay, I thought we were pulling them. All right. For discussion. For discussion. So item eight, correspondence, Exeter West Greenwich School Field Trip Funding Law. Um, Ms. Farnworth? Yeah, it included in our package is a resolution from the Exeter West Greenwich Regional School District um, describing I guess their concerns over the current field trip funding law and the interpretation. Um, I can see, you know, some of the issues that they raise uh, is with regard to, you know, that districts can fund field trips so long as they're part of instructional programs and that all the students have the same ability to attend. Uh, that fundraising is permissible only to supplement the budgeted funds as long as the students do not have mandated fundraising targets um, that would be instilled for their participation and that individuals may be charged a fee for a trip but only for those trips that are not organized by the districts using district resources uh, including district funded staff time i think that I would like to propose that we put this a discussion on our agenda to perhaps consider drafting a similar um, ordinance or amendment. I don't know how you Should we refer to the policy subcommittee? It's not really a policy question. What is it? It's a resolution. Is it in compliance with our policy, though? I mean, when I read it, it seemed kind of like a like like it's policy driven we could certainly put it on the policy agenda sub, uh, subcommittee agenda if that's what the committee wanted to do my aim at calling it out today was to perhaps suggest that we entertain drafting a similar resolution mr chairman if i may our, our policy follows the state law what this resolution is doing is challenging that law right that's that's why i was just it, it's like in conflict 
Right. So drafting. But it, it. But in any event, <laughs> we, it's not we're on not the really agenda, so we should right. put it on right. the right. future right. agenda okay. to discuss it. All right. So right now, I would guess December tenth okay. or December twenty fourth. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> you know, that's when you release the uh, uncomfortable news items, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, and was there something about? I mean, there's really nothing there posted no student under reports. student reports, Miss Black. I just want to know where the students are. Oh, well, that's a. The two that are supposed yeah, to be here. Yeah. 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 The one we're just bringing the confirmation. She's now received. The, the other student got yeah, and, so. and, uh, we just had a student council election since we're using that student body to set up the future. Oh, good. Uh, because, thank you. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we are at item number 12, policy development revision and review. Uh, Item 12A is the one-on-one -on -one parent and student handbook, first reading. Any discussion? Uh, nope. nope. That was changed. That was changed. So. Really? Yeah, it was moved down to new business. Okay. So the next one. So time, time and effort. effort reporting requirements, federal grant programs, first reading. So that, that's really long, <laughs> but it's, it's pretty standard um, stuff for um, federal grants. Mm -hmm. um, that particular item has been around since about 2014, but we didn't have a policy for it. So um, it's a, uh, we uh, pulled it, I believe, Peter, from somewhere else, correct? Did, but yeah. it's, it's a pretty standard, it seems lengthy, but it's a pretty standard well, policy. Yeah. yeah. It's a requirement to receive right. the grants. Okay. Any other questions or discussion about that one? Okay. Eight, item 12B. Now that I have the, the correct of the two different agendas that were sent to me in the same package. Uh, 12B, responsible use of technology staff. Second reading. Any questions, discussion? I, just quick, nothing on the policy um, specifically, but I did want to thank Dave and um, uh, Peter for uh, reaching out to our uh, parents and our staff to get feedback. That was uh, very much appreciated, and I'm, I'm sure by them as well. But. Okay. Um, I just have a couple of comments. On the uh, responsible use policies for staff, um, we had two policies in place. One is the employee's acceptable use of the internet, and the other one, which is 1173, and we have 1175, um, acceptable use of the internet for instruction. Are those going to be replaced by these new policies? With 1175, uh, we would need to be changing that based off of what rides requirements are for if we have websites that are blocked or internet for instruction use is blocked, uh, ways that the staff or faculty have uh, the ability to request a page to be unblocked for educational purposes. So that is pretty boilerplate and we will put it up at the next policy subcommittee um, in regards to what, what ride is requiring. Um, and the, uh, the other policy that you mentioned, I believe this would override that one the the 1173 the acceptable use that is correct yeah. yes so we need to put that on an agenda to override it because it wasn't presented that way yeah we can just have to be we separate. can put 1173 on and just to strike the whole thing okay. nope. at, the, at a future meeting thank you and I also had questions in the and I don't have it up but in the second paragraph of 1184, and I think it's the same in 1185, there's use of the word, um, the word mature was inserted as opposed to uh, another word. Just wondering if you can rethink how that sentence is flowing. It just, it's not working. <laughs> uh, it's really just sure. a grammatical yeah. flow. Yeah. It just doesn't work. 
and that would be the, the same on both policies. They were both done hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I guess lastly, and, and this is just my own little nit with this on 1185, there is a paragraph in there that discuss how students will not photograph audio tape or videotape a fellow student or staff member during the school day without their knowledge. I personally don't feel it belongs in this policy, that it perhaps belongs more in the handbook, but I, and I understand that there are limits to what the school department can do in that regard. I just, it, to me, it just doesn't fit in that policy, but it, it's not something I'll stop the world for. Okay, uh, any other discussion or thoughts? So I guess the question is, can we approve the policies if we're gonna change the language of them? I would be comfortable with approving it. It really was just a yeah, I grammatical think yeah, I think thing. Dr. Okay. Sankioni knows what, or she can follow up to say, you know, mm -hmm. where, yep. point out exactly where that sentence was in both those right. policies and they can be with it. And uh, just to move to 12C then, any questions about the student version and then we could take them up, we could vote on them sort of en bloc. And you had that same comment in that student version too, right? It was, yeah, it was the that. same wording, the same, same, wording. same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other discussion? Ms. Black, Ms. Pavo. I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the two policies, 12 B and C. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? Going once, going twice. All those in favor? Thank you. Item 13 A, the Cursage Energy Contract, Dr. Sankioni. So in your packet this evening, you have the final, finally, the final version of the Cursage Energy Contract. I want to let you know that this was approved and reviewed by attorney Martin Gitlin from the Clear Energy Council. It's the same <coughs> council that was employed by the town, so I seek your uh, approval tonight on this uh, agreement with um, Cursage Energy. I'll make a motion to accept. I have one question. Um, at the end of this contract, it has Dr. Sanchioni signing the contract for the school department. I did go back and look on the town side, it was the town council president that signed theirs, and I don't know what the appreciate answer is for us. Oh, should, so it should it be Dr. Larkin or should it be Dr. Sanchioni? I don't know what the thinking was on the town side. I, think I don't think it matters, does it? I don't think it matters. I represent yeah. you. As long as someone signs it? Yeah. You're happy to, I mean, they, cre they, they, they created it, so I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's a answer to that. I think. Why don't you both sign it? Oh. <laughs> there That's we fine. go. All right. A double dog dare. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Double dog there, yeah. Both right. sign it. Uh, so there is a motion to approve. Any other discussion? Blaine, Sally? No. No. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Uh, 14B, new legislation. Dr. Seng. Nope, nope. Sorry. 14A, high school handbook, Mr. Ashley. Thank you. Chris. Yes, thank you. So um, we took a look at our student handbook with um, the goal of essentially making it more student and parent or family friendly. Uh, and we looked at the way it was organized. Uh, and in the prior handbook, the, all the information was important and necessary, but it was a little disorganized. And it was often difficult when we were referencing or talking about it with our students. You had to flip through different pages and referencing one page versus another. And so. We thought it was a good opportunity to say, let's put all the relevant information under the main categories. And so first we started by uh, updating with our updated core values and beliefs. I don't know if you recall, but I guess it was a couple years ago we updated our um, uh, expectations, core values and beliefs. So we put that in there. And then we structured it around a few main areas, um, student records, attendance, academics, and student behavior. 
And so we took all of the language under each of those according sections, and we basically just moved it to those sections. So you're going to see there's a lot of underlining and some striking out, but all of the underlining is there because essentially whenever we move something, we wanted to acknowledge that uh, by underlining it there. Um, the other piece was that we thought it was a good opportunity to include some more relevant new school committee policies, and so um, one being 1183, the transgender uh, and gender nonconforming students. We just took the language right in there um, to make sure that that was a priority. Um, it might sound obvious, but our bell schedule wasn't in there, so we just thought, well, we should put that in there um, with uh, a blurb about our tiger block, and the tip a tiger block was um, uh, essentially it's our new uh, and improved advisory, so this is that once a month extended advisory period, and so there's a description about that in there. Um, we put our graduation requirements, um, that they were, those were always in our program of studies, but again, we thought we want students looking at this, parents, this is a good, a good place to include that in there. Um, we just put some basic information about Aspen, that's our student management system. Again, thinking about attendance, discipline, that was important to have in there. Um, and also, we really tried to bullet out basic expectations. Again, it sounds a little obvious, but um, in terms of just expectations for when a student is in the cafeteria, and expectations for when a student is in the class, and expectations for when a student is in the hallway. And that was just coming from experience, that when we would communicate verbally with students, we didn't always have the language accompanying that uh, in the handbook, especially around the hallway use. And so we figured, let's just put that right in there, and so that's explicit for our students. Um, and then um, probably the biggest area was the state of Rhode Island has a bunch of codes and uh, outlines for each, well, a number of specific behavioral incidents. So. Um, if there's a verbal altercation or something around um, hallway passes, the state actually defines that for schools in Rhode Island. So we took that language in terms of just how they define it and we put that um, matrix inside the handbook and then we use the same format for the consequences. So now in the handbook, as was proposed, if a student is um, you know, out wandering the hall for an excessive amount of time, there's the consequence in terms of what that's defined as, and then you flip over a couple pages, and in matching with the same code, it says if you um, have that behavioral infraction and it's a first offense, here's your consequence. If it's a second offense, here's your consequence. Uh, and so again, the idea is that when our students know exactly what they should know and be able to do, they're more likely to follow those rules as opposed to having some sense of ambiguity. Um, and so. Um, we updated that accordingly in the behavior section from the old handbook. Um, you know, and so again, uh, the, the overall goal here is more student-friendly, approachable handbook so that instead of just kind of being this document that students hear about at times, that they're actually likely to check, um, not always when there's an incident, but if they just want to follow up uh, for whatever reason. Thank you very much for uh, all the hard work. Um, any <coughs> questions for Mr. Ashley? Uh, Elaine? Sally? Yes. How I'm being prepared tonight. What can I tell you? Um, I just a, one thing I did notice on page 18 of okay. the handbook, and I, you know, I'll ask you to take this away. And yeah. Yeah, sure. and get back to us there there's a discussion about field trips and how students may carry self-carry prescription medicine and our policy 1263 mm -hmm. is in conflict okay. at least in my opinion okay. so if we could take a look at that sure um and I know a lot of this was moving things around, and this is what made it so difficult for me to find yeah. whether or not this next one was the case. I didn't see anything on vaping. I saw tobacco use. I saw drug use. We did add that in there. It is there? In, yes. Okay. But that's where we put it in. We didn't highlight it as a separate category, but we put it under the tobacco section. But... Um, I'll go back and reread it, it. Yeah, but you know what? If you're 
if as an outsider it's not clear to you, mm -hmm. we want it to be clear, so that's a section we can go back. It, it was just funny, sure I kept seeing clear. tobacco, tobacco, and I'm like, nobody smokes. They're all vaping. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it was just, you know, that's what stood out to me. Okay. But again, if it's there, I apologize. Well, we'll go back. No, no, we'll go back and check. We, we do want that to be clear. That's okay. the purpose. And that was the only things I had. Um, I just, something you just said, ride defines the language. They don't define the consequence. They no. just define, okay. Just the behavior. I didn't think so. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be completely honest. I spent most of my time looking at the one to one parent handbook and didn't get all the way through this. So I, I am going to ask that we continue this to um, a future meeting so that I can, because you did move around a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was just trying to, yeah, <laughs> to I, compare. Yeah, I read and somewhat the same, and I'm having serious technical difficulties with getting anything to download. But anyway, uh, yeah, I sort of had a similar kind of feeling about it. I think it would be... Um, and I see what you were getting at. It's just I, I'm trying to go, try to, I'm trying to compare the two, and it's just taking yeah. me a little bit of time. Sure, I, I sure. think it would be reasonable for us to vote to approve pending a final approval at our next meeting. So that at least well, we could just why, discuss why it just, again as yeah, all business. Wait. Yeah, just like we do policy, we'll just have it on in another. I mean, there's no rush to get this on. Are we even going to put? Are we going to put this in place now, or is it going to be for well, next year? Well, that was what I was getting at. Was that um, I don't know. Are what, you functionally you a, have this? Yeah, there's to not the same a body lot. Right I now, mean. Right? Like, yeah, there's some, well, the old you know, one's some, up now. Yeah, so we're st we still have a handbook and there's still code of conduct and. and where much of this so. is cosmetic changes. Yeah, there's it's organizational. Organizational changes, um, I should some, say. You know, some language. You know, around the vaping, for example, we want to be more clear. And like I said, hallway expectations. So, so. if we have it approved, um, Dr. Sanchioni, like by the first of the year, would we j would we roll it out again? And just so everyone knows, okay. Mm -hmm. So would, would that be something maybe That's we fine. could? I mean, they're, they're still using the policies that they have in place to so sort of the start school. the new year with a new handbook. Make sure everybody's so that gives us at least a couple meetings where we can. Is that two okay? meetings, Dr. Larkin? Fine with me. Yeah. Okay. Because like I just it, a lot of things were moved. That's fine. It, it was. It we is. had a so lot of reading for this meeting. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Okay. We'll bring it back. Okay. Um, Thank you. Any other questions about the so substance of it? Back. We're going to bring it back either in the meeting, you know, one of the, either, well, sort of the 26th is pretty crowded right now, so maybe December or January. Well, um, December, because I think they by the first of the year, they oh, kind of wanted to. Yeah. Okay, all right. So that's a so good time to say, hey, we have a new handbook. Meeting in December. Okay. Yeah. I don't I think it's going to take long. I just, I didn't get through it. I just. Um, I had one question, which was that the sort of the requirements or the description of the National Honor Society got dropped, right? No, it's we, still no. there. It's, it, it we still put there. it in. We, I, it. we you added it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was looking at a, I guess, an older. Older, new version. That's not us. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, item 14B, new legislation. Dr. Sankioni. Yes. So this is a, a key presentation for us all. The uh, Rhode Island Gem General Assembly passed the Education Accountability Act, and that is designed to improve the educational outcome for all students uh, in the state of Rhode Island. It's uh, to be implemented starting January 1st, 2020, and it, it truly changes the general powers and duties of school committees, superintendents, principals, and school improvement teams. So I'm going to take each one of those categories uh, individually and show you how uh, the new legislation has impacted each one of those segments of the um, governing bodies here in town. Uh, I will say to you that uh, this legislation is modeled after the, um, the Massachusetts Education Reform Act, and having worked through that for many years, I can see and, and testify to you that of the uh, dramatic impact that has had on school achievement. So I think Rhode Island is taking a step in the right direction here. So I'll start with the school committee. And uh, in your role, and your role gets somewhat modified a little bit uh, in the arena of hiring. 
So the legislation is, has removed that uh, first bullet item there um, and has put you in charge of hiring a superintendent only. And, um, but it does, again, impart to three very distinct responsibilities. So on, you know, to, to be clear, the, the role of the school committee is to hire the superintendent and to hold the superintendent responsible for the educational outcomes of the district. Your role becomes threefold. Um, to set compensation for principals, and that should say all administrators actually, set compensation levels for all school level personnel, and to set policies for school improvement teams and the hiring of school level personnel. So we've talked about the policies a little bit, and we'll certainly look at what we currently have and modify them appropriately uh, to, to fit this legislation moving forward. Hmm. So uh, that, that would be, a, a, that's sort of a big change here. So can we stop as we yes. okay. kind of go through this? So that, if I understand this correctly, we, do, we no longer do the hiring, but we set the policies under which the hiring is accomplished, which would really require us to look at those policies very closely again. It would. Okay. So we're ready to bring those to I you. got that right then. Thank you. All right. Maybe so, we need two policy subcommittees. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on yeah. right now. And, and only half a joke. You're going to be seeing a lot of stuff coming. So then we have the superintendent. And so, uh, again, uh, my roles and duties have been modified a little bit. Um, no longer are required to oversee our schools. That's it's moving directly to the principals, and I think there's a huge benefit to doing that there. Um, so you can see it, my role is to appoint principals for each public school within the district at levels of compensation determined by in accordance with policies established by the school committee. Um, my, my other role is to appoint administrators and other personnel not assigned to individual schools, also to appoint at the recommendation of the principal personnel at individual schools in accordance with policies established by the school committee. And so... Can, can you just go back? Yeah, sure. Uh, right one. there. So, um, I, I get the, I mean, the principles you've kind of always done, but um, at the recommendation of the principal, mm -hmm. so, it, so if now they, you're they, becoming they, us. Yeah, you're us now. So, so they recommend to you, but you have to approve. If you don't approve, they have to recommend someone else because that's how it's always, that's how it was. So, yeah. in essence, that's how it's going to work now. They can recommend someone, but if there's some reason you say, you know, no, I'm going to override you on that, you can't, you can't hire your own person, but that doesn't mean they'd have to bring back a new recommendation. True. And that's how we've actually operated since I've been here. I was going to say, a lot of this is practice anyway. Right. We've, been, we've had this in yeah. practice, and, and Chris right. can attest to this. And, and so we talk a lot about what we're targeting to hire. When I show you what I'm recommending for some policies momentarily in the slides here, you'll understand why you know, the process gets us to the right selection. And right. if you trust the process, we hire the right people. And I think, the, I think it, Jerry, you're right. It just pushes everything down a level from mm -hmm. it, it was – it was us and then the superintendent. Now it's superintendent principal. It just is shoving it down, which was the intent. Which is the intent. And the intent is to, for you to hold us accountable with this and to, and to generate and results centered around under it. Under which they're governing it. Right. <laughs> okay. 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 So Sorry. Then we move. We have several slides now for our five beloved principals. Um, so that they pick up a huge role here. Um, so in consultation with the school improvement team to recommend the hiring of all teachers, athletic coaches, instructional or administrative aides, and other personnel assigned to school consistent with district personnel policies, collective bargaining agreements, and budgetary restrictions, and subject to the approval of the superintendent, provided that the hiring of employees may not interfere with layoff or recall rights, rights provided in collective bargaining agreements. So again, that just in, in a sense says that principals are going to do the hiring based upon the, the approval of the superintendent. Principals' roles also move into termination. So they recommend the termination of all teachers, athletic coaches, instructional and administrative aides, and other personnel assigned to schools consistent with district personnel policies, collective bargaining agreements, and budgetary restrictions subject to the review or prior approval of the superintendent. So in essence, for terminations, uh, principal will recommend to me, principal will conduct it, and then um, it's seconded by me, and we move forward that way. And and. The school committee, again, and it's kind of like, it's already sort of what we do, but we would only get involved in the event of some sort of an appeal. 
or uh, yes, uh, no, not an appeal. Uh, the appeal is the uh, principal first, superintendent second, ride third. Your oh, okay. involvement would be only when it involves uh, financial resources. Oh, okay. So buyouts, things that impact the contract so that, that is, way. So that's different? That's yeah. very different. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Just making sure I yeah. understand. Good question. Continuing on with our, our principals, they also uh, have the responsibility now in cons consultation with their school improvement team to prepare a school budget for consideration by the superintendent. And so we somewhat put that in place last year. We're ramping that up this year and to provide for the evaluation of personnel assigned to the school, including all teachers consistent with the standards developed by the school committee. So evaluation has always been something they've been held accountable to for. And, and we still have the responsibility to approve and manage the overall school budget. That has not changed. Yes, we, they recommend, absolutely. And now we have a higher defined role of school improvement teams. So the school improvement team, including the school principal and led by the school principal, shall meet regularly. Um, it has a composition, composition requirement. I don't get into the composition here, but it requires uh, leaders at the middle school and the high school of uh, curriculum coordinators. It's supposed to have parents involved, students at the appropriate levels, staff, uh, and community members. But they shall, shall assist in the identification of the educational needs of the students attending that school, make recommendations to the principal for the development, implementation, and assessment of a curriculum accommodation plan and shall assist in the review of the annual school budget and in the formulation of the school improvement plan. So the curriculum accommodation plan, we're actually going through that. You'll see that in a couple weeks when we present our RICAS scores. So our principals are required to do an item analysis and you'll see a look, that's the curriculum accommodation plan. So at that school, what do we need to do to change instructionally for the benefit of our students? The school budget is again, a, 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 recommended for consideration to the superintendent to be included in the budget I present to you and the school improvement plan is the goals of the school but in connection to the district goals that then connect us to two teachers uh, personal goals so it's certainly aligning the system there so to address this um, part of our response to the new legislation I, I want to share this with you so part of it is, is policies around hiring and, and this is what we're, we're going to sort of what we have in place and what we want to bring to you um, is that for personnel at the school level, the principal will conduct the search including uh, a paper screen. Uh, secondly, uh, obviously an interview with the established committee of school personnel, parents uh, and other personnel when, when necessary or appropriate uh, to continue to use things like demonstration lessons and writing prompts conduct a second interview when necessary, conduct reference checks, including one reference check with a non-listed reference, a recommend to the superintendent, superintendent conducts the final interview, it's that step and lane. So that's where um, the school committee can get involved mm -hmm. with, because by policy we can say you need to demonstrate a lesson or a writing prompt Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. where we... This is, pro this is right. policy, right? Okay. So I'm, I'm showing to you what Perfect. we're recommending, okay. recommending currently what we use, but now you need to make it policy. Right. Yep. Okay. Same thing with the hiring of, of administrators. So I, I'd recommend to you that we conduct, the superintendent conducts a search. We do a paper screen with a screening committee. We interview with an established committee made up of school personnel, uh, parents from that school, depending on what the position and when appropriate. Uh, reference checks, at least two with a non-listed reference, a second interview. Mm -hmm. Candidates visit the school. Candidates have an open forum for parents and the community, a final interview, and then the superintendent wants the contract. So basically that's the process, if you may recall, we hired Principal Craven. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, if you trust the process, it always leads you to the right decision. There's multiple, multiple steps and multiple, multiple checks along the way. Um, so that's what's in place and what, we'll, what we'd like to dialogue with you about making the policy for hiring. So to this slide, um, I don't think it is in policy, but we have generally been in the last few years anyway, interviewing the finalists for principals positions and administrative positions. So the law... We're no longer... Yeah. You could be part of the committee. So if we set policy, we could still... Do, so we've, it's never been policy. So we could, in writing the policy, say, not that we're the final decision maker, but we can include us in that Is process. that true? Because I thought part of the, exactly, yeah. part of the law was to take us out yeah. of that role. Your, your role they don't can be want you. They don't want us yeah. at the, 
the second interview committee or the first interview committee in, in representation of the school committee there? So you could have one or two as right. long as there's not a majority not sitting a in on those committees, yeah. but we can no longer have a majority like we right. were doing because they don't, law specifically excludes us from doing that because the whole point is to push it down. I think that's perfect. <laughs> well said. I know this is a lot and we can go through this uh, several times till we feel all feel comfortable with it. Um, so that's hiring. Can and I then just, before we go on, the, or were you gonna get there, talk about the SIT teams? Um, Do you have more? I'm gonna review, I can go back to the SIT teams. I have a final slide kind of reviewing it, but most of the data was on the slide here. Because so. when I read the policy, when I read the law, it actually gives you a year to put together like policies around mm -hmm. your sit teams. Right. So that was a little odd to me that it, a lot of this is going to go, and I'd have to reread it, but a lot of this is supposed to go into effect January 1st, yet it gives you an entire, it gives you till next right. August Which to develop make, policy. Right. I just thought that was a little odd. Okay. Well, right. You're absolutely if you right. Because if you don't have them in place, and you if no you don't coverage. have your policies in place, then you're not going to have a yeah. policy. Right. Well, no I mean, you're not going to have it a you way can, to, to... Well, the bill was signed in July. We could yeah. very well have been in front of it. But. I think we are in front of it. I think we're, and we're yeah. much further along than most communities. I, I think we're ready to recommend to you policies. I'm showing you a couple here now. I think there was now. just so much confusion. Like right. I said, even the fact that in the law it says, oh, but none of this has to be put into place policy-wise until next August. And right. I thought, oh, well, isn't that an odd thing to tag on mm -hmm. when you're making it effective January 1st. Well, in some regards, it's realistic. All right. So. But I didn't, I didn't get the sense that they were going to delay anything else. No. Right. Like, they weren't going to delay the law right. or anything else. It was just, in well, you have, a extra, you have some extra time to write the policy, but the law still went into effect as mm -hmm. of January 1st. There was a little bit of a, it was just conflicting. Well, I, I, in Rhode Island, it is possible to have unrealistic and realistic aspects <laughs> of any given statute. I was, I was just like, what? So, okay. But I'm not misreading that. That was sort no, of your... I like, just think that I, I, my, my sense is the legislation has defined it so clearly that the policy is really going to follow what they're, they're defining. So yeah, you, so I just thought that was odd that hard. they would say, oh, you have a... We're going to give you a whole extra year to put the policy in place, but oh, by the way, the law is going to start January 1st. Mm. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, uh, so we talked about hiring uh, school-based personnel. We tried to talk about administrators. And then just to touch upon, we've, I've already hit upon this, but teacher non-renewal. So uh, the same thing. Uh, the summary here is this, it's the principal dismiss any teacher and non-other personnel signed full-time to the school. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. Approval of the superintendent, that's the process. Principal to the superintendent, and the final step is if they want to appeal, it is to ride. Your role would be involved, again, when it involves compensation, buyouts, numbers, anything that becomes financial. Okay. Um, and it just defines here what uh, a tenured teacher and a, and a teacher can be dismissed for, which is basically what we've always followed anyways. Was there intention here to make it, to give the principals more autonomy and, well, clearly more autonomy, but doesn't really get into collective bargaining agreements? Should it have? No. They're, they're mentioned uh, back in the, when I covered some of the slides on the hiring. It talks about we uh -huh. can't violate them, but there's a spirit of this law that says, you know, we want to be able to, and I'm going to talk about that momentarily, actually. So thank you. What a great segue. Uh, I want to show you the current contract that uh, we're, we're currently living under and how we're going to proceed under this. So our contract states vacancies should be filled on the basis of certification and qualification for the position qualifications being equal seniority shall prevail so everyone comes to us has to be certified so that's sort of a non-factor and qualifications so how do you determine qualifications so I'm suggesting to you in the process we've been using is we determine qualifications by that by that <laughs> That. <laughs> by that one, by screening, by interviewing, by demonstration lessons, by writing prompts, by second interviews, by reference checks, and, and third interviews with the superintendent. That's how we determine qualifications. And then all things being equal, if, if in fact we had two people who were equal, then yeah, sure, sen seniority would prevail. Uh, the thing I want to point out to you in our contract that no longer exists, though, 
is this language here. Teaches maintaining a certification and highly qualified status or applicable in the subject area of a vacant position shall be presumed to be appropriately qualified for the position and shall be appointed. Well, highly qualified was part of no child left behind and no child left behind no longer exists. And there's the language from the RIDE website. So if NCLB no longer exists and highly qualified no longer exists, then the only things we have to rely upon is certification and qualification. Again, certification is a given. Qualification has to be determined. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to determine who the most highly qualified person is, and that's who we're going to hire. So just a quick summary then. Um, school committee appoints superintendent, sets district policy, sets the budget and compensation levels. The superintendent appoints all administrators and non-school-based personnel, approves all other hiring recommendations made by principals, reviews budgets submitted by principals, submits a budget for consideration by the school committee, reviews and provides approval for all principal recommendations for termination. Principals recommend and for hire all personnel assigned to their buildings, prepares a school-based budget in consultation with the school improvement team, recommends termination of personnel assigned to their schools. And the school improvement team helps create the school improvement plan, helps formulate a school-based budget to be submitted to the superintendent, works with the principal to develop school-based curriculum accommodation plan. So it flows, hopefully it, it connects for you. It's, some changes, but I, I, I'll, I'll say to you that I think these are the changes that are going to make a difference in the best interest of kids. And we set policy on the hiring. Yep. And we also set policy on the school improvement teams. Yes. You approve the school improvement plans. School improvement Pro teams. Um, in accordance with state law. Yeah. yeah and I mean, it, it's sort of, I'm going to just give you the state law, I guess, if you want to modify yeah. it, but it's pretty straightforward language. Well, policy is sometimes, you know, has to, it's sort of like regulation. So policy is the implementation of law. Mm -hmm. So I think there are. No, we definitely need to look at it. That's is, why I think the, Diane brought it done. up last time. I think yeah. the school improvement teams in particular need special attention. Right. Um, but to your point, we don't need to do it immediately. But that. Right. But I, but I think we also have to be careful important. about how we make the law effective. You know, in particular, who, you know, it's sort of the who's included on the team and, you know, perhaps even down to when the team is meeting so that you have the community members and the parents and the, you know, yep. students that are supposed to be part of those teams are actually practically able to attend the meetings. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to Well, and I think that's a, an important part of it. That's a really good point of discussion for us, too. It's... Right. This goes into place January 1st, so perhaps it's whatever policies we were, we were working on aren't as urgent right. as these. Right. And yeah, that, I would say so. you know, hiring and sit should take precedence over sort of any other ones um, that we want to see um, modified at this point. Um, just because the law is going to go in effect. And you're right, if we don't have policy, then the absence of that, we have no, other than the law, we, we have, have best practice. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, just emphasize you have the law, which is what we're, yeah. we're following now. Right. So all our principals right. are following the school improvement team uh, law, part of that law. We've talked about that. We're following uh, best practices for hiring. Yep. So, I mean, there's a safety net there, but uh, right. again, you should look at it and decide if you want to modify that. Right. Right, because, I mean, it's, you know, it's a fundamental change that we govern through policy, so it's really important, and we had this policy, discussion, right. that we get policy right. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's eliminating policy that we have because it's outdated Absolutely. redundant yeah, whatever the school improvement or, plan policy you have is is, uh, is antiquated you can't even exactly. use it anymore and we exactly. need to look at it and rewrite it but incorporate the state so law and then it. yeah <laughs> okay so but that was i guess given uh, part of the, as part of this discussion and and this was a great summary peter is um it sounds to me like in a, in you know if the board's in agreement we should probably focus on the things that are going to be impacted by this 
sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, so it, this is just a practical application here. You have custodians assigned to each building. Those custodians will report will be accountable to who? The principal. The principal. You work in a building, you're accountable to that principal. That's mm -hmm. everyone. Secretary, special education, mm -hmm. people who may be, quote, hired by the region. If you work at Ranger, Manny's your, your supervisor and is responsible for you. Okay. And one of our centralized services, IT, those folks all continue to bubble up through or to to David right. or so to the principal. To, to the superintendent, but David would be my designee then under that. Okay. Okay. If they're cross district. If they're cross district, right. So that you may recall in um, an earlier slide it talks about probably on the superintendent. Yeah, oh, to, to a point, point. okay. Point. Not assigned to individual yeah. schools on the bottom there? Yep, thank you. Okay. I mean, there. I don't think there are a lot of those, no. but there no. are some. No. no, it was just really a, an understanding. Well, in a bigger district, there would be a lot, but yeah. Okay. The only other thing that comes to mind is, does this, I mean, I know this is, all for improving all schools in Rhode Island. Are there any concerns that they, there might be, by, by separating all the schools and, and empowering them individually, that perhaps school, elementary school A starts doing things much differently in elementary school B and C? Not going to happen in Tiverton. Yeah, I was going to say, because they still That's why you have to you. district goals, and yeah. then you have a school improvement plans that connect to the district goals, and the teachers' SLOs connect to the school improvement plan, and you align the system that way. Okay. So we could in other districts, uh, I mean, I would imagine, be good, well, but not, it's, you know, it, it depends how the superintendent wants to run the school. I suppose I can't imagine running yeah. a district well, like that. Well, the principals are still accountable to you. Exactly. Right. And their school improvement plan will be connected to the district goals, and right. we will be aligned. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It does rely a lot on the sort of expertise and skill of the principal. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. Uh, which, you know, sort Intentionally. of Intentionally. Well, I was just going to say, if you look at sort of studies of this thing, no disrespect, but the superintendent doesn't have as much of an impact on whether a school is performing as the principal does so I read that research and I will second it <laughs> so. thank you it's best practice okay. thank you all right so I, I guess I go back to conclude you know some changes here for everyone but it, again I believe they're the right changes and again I speak from experience I think this is gonna have a, a major positive impact um, and to a couple of uh, people have spoken from the board already uh, you know our, our first next move should be to look at some of those key mm. policies and, and get them aligned um, as soon as we can um, but I just want to instill confidence in you that we've got uh, a way to hire right now that I think is highly effective I think our school improvement teams are up and running and they're running effectively um, they are going to submit budgets this year they know that's a responsibility they're putting in place their our curriculum accommodation plans based upon RICAS you'll see that uh, in two weeks when we come here so a lot of things that are uh, embedded in this uh, new law are already in place here you know I kind of look at it too from you know because I have a financial background you have lots of checks and balances in place it's not you know you're not just having one person do one thing you have two. you have a check over here on that person this is kind of this this to me is analogy. very similar you have lots of checks and balances you have those school improvement teams you have mm -hmm. these processes the hiring the firing the um, and so it's not um, I mean, I don't want people to be fearful that it's just going to be this. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Thank it's, you for it's saying that. A lot, of, a lot of checks and balances, a lot of thought went into, you know, doing this. And we kind of in Tiverton operated, um, certainly since you've been here, in this vein anyway. For most of it, you're absolutely right, yeah, because yeah. it, it works. Yes. Yes, I think we're, we're very fortunate to have that to Santioni to lead us through this because it is a big change. 
and we went through it in Massachusetts and if it's if it's not done properly it can't be but you you already have put these things in place yeah they, they're good you know? practice right and so they, it works we'll fold right into it very nicely okay thank all right. you all right thank you thank you So we are on item 14C, award contract to Albert Construction Corporation for bathroom renovations. So in your packet, you have a contract uh, submitted by Alborg to renovate our bathrooms. I want to remind you this, that the, uh, we went out to bid for this and that uh, we received one, res one response from Alborg Construction. That bid was reviewed by our architect and members of the school department and we found the bid responsive to our needs. Their bid is for $355,000. We'll provide the complete renovation of four bathrooms, two at the high school and two at the middle school. And funding for this project will come from $272,365 from already appropriated bond funds and $100,000 from the school capital account. Uh, the amounts I just quoted are higher than the bid amount, so the unencumbered amount will be applied to a contingency contingency fund for this project. So this evening we're recommending you vote favorable action on rewarding the bathroom construction contract to all board construction can i have a motion to award the contract is there a second i'll second for discussion okay that's what i wanted to get to so sally yeah uh so i'm asking any any questions sally or discussion Diane? Trying to understand this 272000 from the already appropriated bond funds. Okay. Was that what was left over? Yeah. And that was certified by our architect, by RGB. At the last meeting? Yeah. That was what was on the bottom? Yep. And the town's in agreement? Yes. And that was also checked by Denise. Okay. Okay. So you are asking for $100,000 from... Our when no, you no, say no. school capital, you mean fund balance? That so was the appropriation. Had, there was an appropriation in the budget. That was part yeah, of the that's appropriation. What, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah. So that was already set aside. We did that just so everyone understands. That was something yes. we already set, set aside. Yeah. That was already set aside. No, that was or, part from of, the general. That was part of the budget that was approved yeah. in May. Right. It was right. separate from our operating budget. It was budget. separate from the fund balance and the operating was, budget. That correct. was approved by it the taxpayers. It was appropriated by the town yes. mm -hmm. past May. So when they say school capital account, it doesn't mean the fund balance. Yes, yeah. yeah. our fund balance. It means that it was approved by the taxpayers. Right? Correct. You're absolutely okay. right. Yes. We're all saying the same. And it's we probably are. worth mentioning, too, that I just want on, to make sure we're clear on, on that 100000 actually for, on both amounts, um, Momentarily, I'll ask, ask you to approve a contract for an OPM. Um, with the open OPM in place, the amount that Alborg bid, the 355,000, 40% of that will be reimbursable back to the town. Right. Excellent. Right. So exactly which ones are going to be renovated and when? Chris? So we're going to focus on the senior lounge or commons bathrooms, and then depending on budget, we'd love to, what we call our English wing bathrooms as well. Your um, what bathrooms? The, well, the English wing bathrooms. Oh, okay. Um, yep. In the, the main English hallway, um, you know, budget dependent. Because I know the so middle the, schools so involved. So the boy too. girl in the commons. Definitely boy girl definitely. in the commons. Okay. That's a definite. Those yes. are the two we'll do at the high school this at year. The high school. And Correct. at the middle school, they're the two outside of the cafeteria. Oh, okay. okay. So the ones that get Outside used for dances. Exactly. And, yeah. Okay. So by two, you yeah. mean one boy, one girl. Correct. Yeah. Four all together. So two middle school, two, here, two, two high there. school. Excellent. Got to start somewhere. That's great. Yes. Looking forward to it. And I'm sorry, did you say when? When? Did you say? Oh, Once you sign the contract, we'll call all book tomorrow and say, let's yeah. go, boys. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, boys. Do we, how many bathrooms do we have in each of the schools? A lot more than this. I know. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were just creating our uh, yeah. capital plan for you, part of our budget. Um, eight more in this bathroom. Eight, eight, four more sets in this room. Okay. And that's not counting teachers. 
Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Yep. Student Middle school is four more. Student back. That's not counting the faculty back. Okay. Are the faculty bathrooms as bad as the student no. bathrooms? They could. Have you? They could. You they could use some help here? too. I have. <laughs> they didn't seem too bad. That's my bad. They. They course. could use some help. If they, you ask, if you ask okay. the teachers, the, the I think they would the agree. Sink thing. Yeah. So, so more yeah. than the four that we're doing, but you got to start somewhere. Agreed. Uh, well, I think it's well. something that sort of keep in mind. Yep, it is. And the reason we chose those particular bathrooms is the general public yeah. uses those. Yes. And they get more so, use. So maybe we should have done the other ones first, and then they could continue to complain. And I, <laughs> 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 well, the I know. Right? <laughs> yes, Mrs. Black. Yes, I, no, I think this is really good because the uh, the citizens did vote for this, yeah. and uh, as well as the tennis courts, and we, we're getting it done, and that's the most important thing when we go back and ask them for more. They know that we are. Uh, Holding to our word, which is because I remember in, um, when I first ran in 04, I was going around door to door and asking for the three elementary schools, and they said, Absolutely not. And I said, Why? And they said, Because you haven't done anything with the bond we voted for in 02 yet. That wasn't good. You know, the science wing, mm -hmm. the guidance wing in the fields, nothing had happened yet, even uh, though they voted oh, in 02. No, yeah. So they, we want to get this done as we go along. So this yep. is good. Thank you. Thank you for all that hard work getting this done. And only one bid, huh? Only one bit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? Yep. All those in favor? Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, item. Don't move my. Heating oil. Heating oil. Heating oil bid. So we end with go out for a heating oil bid in your packet this evening. We received one big bid back from Santa Buckley Energy of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, they are offering a cost of $2.26 uh, per gallon. We found this bid response to be responsive to our needs and ask you to reward this this evening. So even though we bid with the town, the fire department police, Little Compton, we still only get one bidder? <laughs> I assume they must have local offices. I yeah. assume that's headquarters for I them. Just, I mean, yeah. you know. So, so, you know, we're trying as best we can uh, to, like the bus to give big about. volume, and yet yeah. we still only got one better. All right, motion to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Item uh, 14E, discussion, possible vote to purchase a new maintenance truck snowplow. Dr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So in your packet, you have two documents. You have a, an accounting of our fund balance that we believe is accurate to this point that's showing a, a fund balance balance at this time that's available to the school committee of 502,776. Uh, behind that, you also have an estimate uh, for a new truck, regular cab pickup, heavy duty um, truck. And I want to turn this over to Mr. Mendes now to explain to you the reason and rationale why we need this uh, vehicle. Uh, the present truck we have and it will, that will be re, will be replacing is the 2007 truck, not the one that we just approved, you guys just approved two years ago, a year and a half ago. It's a 2007 truck that the uh, motor had seized in it, so it's unusable. It's going to cost us more to put a new motor in it than it is to, than it's actually worth. That's why I'm, we're asking for this. Um, if you have any questions, I'm willing to ask, answer any questions. Mike, if you can just get into a little bit about the necessity for the vehicle, maybe talking a little bit about the needs for plowing uh, and the limitations <clears throat> plowing, when we don't have this. Right now, with the one truck, I'd plow a fire lane on all, all five buildings. And then either we hire a contractor or the town would have to come in and plow. And they're going to do the street before they come see us. You got a delay of school, possibly cancellation of school, you know, which extends the school year. Um, you know, that's one delay. If, if we get eight inches, they will come in and help us. 
but you're going to have at, at eight inches you're going to close school anyways yeah, I was say school will be closed yeah but anything on a short term smaller term we do ourselves the two guy myself and one other guy does all the plowing on all five buildings and I th didn't we we looked at potentially getting contractors in the past and it was just it was hard to predict the cost it is you go <clears throat> they normally will give you like zero to two inches yeah. is one price and it per time they come out right so if you have them come out twice in one storm you're paying double you never know what the cost is going to be they come out four times it's four times you can't predict when they're going to come in either so that's a possibility of no school again. Yeah, because I, I remember we, we looked, I don't remember how many years ago, but we did try quite to a few look years at ago, yeah. outsourcing it, not having our own truck, and it, it just, the math just didn't We've, work. in the past, we've done a very good job of it. He's, they all give us time to clean out that snow, get all the staff and students in safely. Um, Two hours is more, usually a lot more than we need, but <clears throat> sometimes we need those two hours. It takes two trucks just in this building, <coughs> three hours, sometimes four hours to do this parking lot. Do, so, what do, don't we use the truck for other things other than just? Other than that, yes, yeah. we do it. <clears throat> the truck will be used in all maintenance. Uh, it pulls the, the, all the trailers around, the line the fields, um, going for parts for anything we need. If I'm not available, he, he's available to go. Because it's like that's district vehicles. Those are really the only district right. vehicles. We have one we district have. vehicle. Exactly. Well, we have two, technically. One is the lunch van, yeah. which they need so many hours per day. Yeah. And it's that's the time we need it. Yeah. So we need... So that goes down to one. Okay. The quote I'm seeing here is thirty-eight thousand. That's that's state bid price. Okay. Would there be any fees above that? No, I had all the fees and everything included in that price. Okay. And is there any residual value on the vehicle? Traded. <sighs> Not a lot. Uh, but it can I, come. I will You'll once, once have to trade it in. if once we finalize everything, I will look at how much they'll give us on a trade-in value of it. I'm not looking at a whole lot. Well, it has an engine that doesn't work. It has no engine. I mean, no, not. but it's got. It's still for parts and metal. parts and whatnot. Yeah. Yes. So can we go back? You said we have two vehicles. We have two snow plows. Two. Okay. Two pickups, both, both of them's got snow plows on. We just bought one last year. One of them was just year. purchased yeah. a year yes. ago, not even. One Mike drives. Yeah. And then this is the second one is the one that the is broken. Right. And then you said there's a third one that's a lunch van? It's the lunch van, yeah. Okay. But they deliver the lunches to the elementaries and middle right. high school. No, okay. So we own, so the district owns three vehicles. Three vehicles, vehicles yes. Not a bike or a scooter somewhere. No, right? nothing like that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just asking. Any other questions for Mr. Mendes or Dr. Sanchioni? So. I think too that that um, the capital doesn't include the monies that um, we. Once we get a final FY19 reconciliation, there were monies that we needed to um, unappropriate, if you will, right. for things that were uh, paid in the yep. past mm -hmm. with operating budgets. So I think that's closer to probably a million. There was definitely money that we had appropriated that was not spent. You either spent it out of capital or out right. of operations, or we just didn't decide. Like the never, science room, we never so, yeah, we just never and we the, never. So there is there is money that we are we need to um, put back. Um, so with that, I think we're about a million, but we'll we'll have that finalized hopefully when our new budget manager or uh, sorry director of finance gets in. 
So I can't remember if there's a motion on the floor or not. There is. There is. Second. All right. So any other discussion? I'm not sure there's any way around this then. For well, that's. So. You know, that's a, I'm, I'm, because we're already in a structural deficit, it's difficult to approve spending out of that fund balance, but there are, you know, just some things, what's your option? Okay. I mean, that's, and that's why we've always had a fund Pay balance, later, because right. we need to, you know, things come up that we don't anticipate that aren't budgeted for, and this is one of them. Uh, that's why you need about a 3% fund balance on your $30 million um, uh, but I don't, I don't see a way around it. I also would see this as, you know, beginning of a discussion of maybe we should be planning for regular replacement of these vehicles as opposed you're, to waiting for them to die. You're <laughs> going to see that on our capital plan when we come Good. forward. With it. Okay. Like they do with the uh, police vehicles yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and the fire vehicles, yeah. <coughs> All right. As you may recall, we had to actually convene a special session to yes, the last did. one because yep. it was December. And yep. It's New England, so. Yeah, it was going to snow that mm -hmm. yeah. No, I think we, we had a lot more of a cushion back then, though. It's we did. Yeah. All right. So any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? All right. Thank you, Mr. Mendes. And... 14 F award contract of Peregrine Group for OPM, Dr. Sanchioni. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we may recall last time I spoke to you about the need of the, for the district to have a new five-year capital plan and items that are on our capital plan are the only items that RIDE will reimburse for us. And in pursuit of that new five-year um, capital plan, we applied to RIDE and, and received a grant for $100,000 to guide us through that. And in going through that ride suggested to us that we have an OPM guide us on all these future projects that are coming forward. And if we add an OPM in as part of the uh, process of, like, for example, doing these bathrooms, uh, Tividen's reimbursement would go from 35 to 40 percent. So not only do we have the $100,000 grant to have, uh, help offset the cost of an OPM, we gain it back 5 percent additional in every project we complete. In addition to that, you cannot qualify for the safety reimbursement. Uh, and some other reimbursements unless you have an OPM too. So we actually could get up to like 48% on some items for reimbursement nice. with an OPM. Huh. So we went out and looked at OPMs. They're, they're on the, um, the bid list uh, for, um, for RIDE. Uh, and after looking and calling a few districts who are using OPMs, we'd like to recommend to you the, the Parag Paragrine group who've come in and met with uh, Mike and myself several times now. We're impressed with their work. And we'd like to employ them to be the district's OPM. I'll make a motion to approve. So I have one question. So this is only when they do the work. So it's it, we're sort of agreeing to use them as our agent, if you will, at a certain rate. But it's not paying a retainer to them of fifty thousand dollars or something. Right. They they'll help us first create the five. Well, the, I guess their first com consecutive work. They'll be. Uh, taking over the uh, bathroom projects for us immediately, right. but they'll also start working with us on the new five-year plan. But what I'm guessing, at, what I'm getting at, is that it's sort of like having the, you know, the attorney yeah. doesn't bill us every, you know, if, if they do nothing for us, in although they tend to be doing something for us every month, but if if there are no billable hours in July, there is no billing to the district. This is right. an agreement at of a rate of pay for work Completed. that they will do for us at our request. That is correct. Okay. And we have $100,000 $100, for them to do it. To offset it. And the reimbursement alone, I would think. So would. they'll be done it's at 99 <laughs> 999 um, Is there any kind of date tied to this? Uh, there isn't. We're, we're employing them as our OPM. We can maintain them as, as we see fit. Um, How long do we have to spend the grant? Is it just you get it? We have the grant for okay. the five once the uh, new capital plan is in place. Okay. Okay. Okay, so there is a motion on the floor. Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, item 14G potential engagement of short term finance consultant. Uh, Ms. Farnworth, I'm going to toss this to you. Even though your name's not there, you would be 
requested that we put this on the agenda. Thank you. Um, I don't know how we have been without a permanent director of finance now for 10 months. Um, and, and while we we did have an interim consultant in, we are quickly, well, we are in the audit season. We are quickly approaching some year-end reporting deadlines for financials as well. Um, and, and while I have overwhelming confidence in the, in the office staff, I would just feel better as a school committee person having perhaps a, some kind of short-term oversight to the process um, as we go through the audit and as we get toward our year-end reporting deadlines uh, for, to bring someone in who has this skill set, who has the designation of CPA, to, to review what we've got in making sure that the, you know, the receivers of our information are getting top notch uh, of what we need to, to submit. You know, we, we have come to an agreement with a new director of finance, but there is an awful lot of work that's gonna be on her plate right from day one. Um, we, we still, you know, we need to, we have 2019 to, wrap up put to bed we have 2020 that we're several months in on that that there's got to be some some catch up and oversight on her part and then of course <laughs> welcome to Tivert in 2021 budget time and, and then we you know the, the beginning of this you know the new school improvement plans where the um the the individual building principals are going to be submitting budgets. It's a little different than what we've had in the past. So she is going to have her hands full. And I would like to recommend that perhaps we we hire from the outside on a very short-term basis, perhaps limiting um, the engagement to X number of hours to be, you know, determined on whatever is appropriate um, to bring someone in and make sure that at least for this audit and at least, uh, you know, to close out 2019 to get our most important reporting done uh, before year end and, and get us off to a good start with our new person. Okay. Uh, anyone else, any other questions, comments, Elaine? Sally? No, I, I agree, we, we need to have this done properly and um, there's a little gap here so I think that would be good but I don't, I don't know how we would proceed to do that but how to find would, a would we just, consultant you know. Dr. Sanchioni I think Ms. Palish wants your attention first Ms. no oh. I'm listening <laughs> oh. thank you um, I guess I want to instill some confidence with the committee you may recall you, you that uh, put in place you've already put in place an account we hired to prepare us for the audit. So that took place. So we already had an expert come in, prepare our documents to hand over to the auditors who've already begun that work. And so FY19 is going to be closed by, the, by these auditors probably within the next week or so. So I'm confident that that process is gonna be done and completed. Uh, the year-end documents that have to be submitted to the town, uh, I've consulted with Carolyn and, and, and Dottie about that, and both of them feel that those, those documents will be completed and, and turned in on time, and they will be accurate. Um, we still need to get you an accounting at the FY20 budget. Um, you know that, I'm just not sure if a consultant can do that for us. Uh, by the time you hire someone, and get them to come in here and get familiar with what they need to be familiar with it. And they're gonna to have to just rely upon Carolyn and Dottie. And so I feel like we're just making extra work for them. Uh, by the time that person gets up to speed, uh, Amy's gonna be here. And you know, I, I think if anything, I'd recommend that uh, we recognize the work that Carolyn and Dottie have done and, and maybe reward them financially um, with this. I, I understand the intent, I just want, I'm, I, want to make sure there's a value add here. And I'm not sure that in that short amount of time before Amy comes on and the work that has to be completed, we're gonna get that. Dr. Larkin? Yes. I, I think that, um, you know, understand under our past director of finance, um, Ms. Farr, we had a consultant 
both the first year she was here and the second year she was here. And that was even with the terrific work that um, our staff do. Um, so I think if you brought that, some, I just want to make sure, is that the consultant we use right now to do the audit? I don't know who you, I wasn't aware Have we you were using someone? anybody. Yeah. I think that's always been in place. Well, no. Oh, well, it was in place it's last year and this year. It was year. in place last year and, and there was. This was different from the auditors. This was. Yeah. 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 So I guess this is news to me <laughs> that we have somebody in that's helping that that was not supposed to be a recurring arrangement. So I'm not, I guess we have some discussion on that point because are you talking about the gentleman from Baxter Dance, Dance Row? Uh, can I ask you to help me out here? Thank you. So I don't know, that wasn't, that was a one time Right, but the he was brought in because Ms. Farr was new? No, he was with us before. Um, just helping as a consultant every t for the audit? Yeah. So, so after we, we so dancer, he, they used to do the audit. So you're, okay. what we're hearing is <laughs> after the, they stopped doing the audit and we got our current, Haig Sahadi, that he has been on s some sort of agreement that he has been helping us with, it, which is fine. It's just that's news to us. Okay. Because um, yeah. that, that was a one, my understanding was it was a one time we had a new finance yeah, director. No yeah, we had no idea. So I, I had no idea they would help he would, that we had brought a consultant in to help Doug. So if that's the case, then we have a consultant. But what, I guess what we're saying is we, we, we didn't know that we did. <laughs> Unless anybody else, uh, because that, I mean, you I know, that, th that would, I mean, that would be some sort of contractual arrangement that certainly your board was not available or was not aware of. And, and I don't ever remember budgeting it or even talking about it, but your point is well taken is that we have, because they have ha helped us in the past. Um, so what you're saying is they are still here helping, which was the goal. So if we have someone, then that's fine. Then that's fine. <laughs> yeah, they've come, I mean, they've come and gone. They did their work. They prepared the, the, the booklet for the audit. They turned that okay. booklet over to the auditors, and the auditors began their work. Okay. So let's just, um, before we continue that practice in, um, next year, I guess uh, that, that should probably be something that... that yeah. um, well, I'll have to guess. Look at to, you know to Miss Mendy's point. Uh, if he's but, if that but person's fine. been here since. Um, yep. Mr. Uh, Fiore, I mean, now you're going back. Well, I think four you. Years. I think you leave it up to Miss Roderick. Right. Okay. Right. See what she thinks. Sure. Uh, yeah. So it sounds like you were just following past practice. Well, absolutely. We it seems like of. it's. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just, but the, the goal was to have a consultant, and we have one. So I guess you're a step ahead of us there, Peter. <laughs> so if that's the case, I, I will withdraw my request. Well, there's no motion. We're just yes. an yeah. item of discussion. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Huh. My and the things I have been thinking is that I'm concerned about the audit, but it sounds like we have sort of oversight there. Mm -hmm. um, my concern has been the, the reconciliation for FY19, sort of the budget to actual for FY20, and where we're going to be with FY21. Um, and none of them, from what I understand as a non-accountant, look uh, particularly rosy right now. And my concern is that when Amy comes, how much time she will have to actually come up to speed on everything and will she benefit and will the district benefit from having someone who helps her get all of that stuff closed out? And, and not placing that extra burden on the staff, the existing staff. Yeah. I mean, I, I, maybe that's something we have to wait and ask her. Yeah. 
Right. I mean, because we now know there's consultant. I mean, certainly we have the one that we use now. I think there's other consultants that you know are familiar with the district that we could reach out to. But um, maybe that's a conversation that you know Peter can have with sure. Miss Roderick when she starts. Because the last thing I want to do, like Diane said, is have her come in and say, figure out FY19, get FY20 under control, do the day to day, and oh by the way. Now, now do the budget and, and not only overwhelm her but overwhelm the rest of the staff in that and if, and if it's, a, and if it's a, a matter of getting some extra assistance because clearly we did it now <laughs> um, we can mm -hmm. but uh, you know I you know is that kind of your concern as well that it's just going to be yeah well and that also that if there is anything wrong with the audit not that I'm anticipating that but we will be held accountable for, well, maybe we have the, the we do have the expertise there. Um, not that we don't have it with the staff, I, I agree with you, I have every confidence in the staff in the office and every confidence in uh, the town treasurer. Um, I'm just concerned about, because the audits have been problematic the last two years for different reasons. No, we're not. Uh, I would imagine the treasurer has she spoken to anyone uh, that she does not want to extend this year. She has spoken to us about that. Yeah. Okay. So so anyway, so that that is my other concern is that uh, if we don't have um, if if there is a problem, we'll be playing catch up and um, you know be open to criticism that we didn't have you know a finance director. I don't disagree. This. So. Um, I think at this point, though, if, if we've got the audit covered with, with consulting. It, it does concern me, though, because the same consultant, we <laughs> used him last year, and we had a problem, and we did have to extend. Yeah. Well, so I, I don't think we were aware he was here then either. <laughs> no, we weren't. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Go ahead. We, we could certainly wait until Ms. Roderick starts give her a week or so to get her feet wet and then maybe you know have a discussion with her where she thinks if she needs additional support to get her, get her through year end mm -hmm. then perhaps we we come back and have another discussion uh, uh, well and we're going to need have to Dr. Sankioni is going to have to you know bring that to us mm -hmm. yeah. um, understanding we, there's a lot of concern on this board understood yeah. of of where we are for FY19 where we are for FY20 because we have been without mm -hmm. a permanent director of finance for quite some time. So um, we're very excited to have her on board and um, we wanna do whatever we can to support her and her team to give us the information that we need and that you need mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Agreed, I think we've compartmentalized it for her though. So FY19 is, I mean, it's, it's under wraps. I mean, it's be, it, it, the consultant huh. came in and we're going to get that audit report. She'll have to review it, but we'll we'll know what needs to be reviewed. Her her number one task is FY20, and to get a good understanding of that. FY21, I've already begun that process with our principals, and I'm going to manage that process right on through um, to give her some relief there. So, you know, I, I think we're going to structure this in a way that she can be successful. But even FY19, the auditors may be able to tell you this is your ending fund balance, but they can't tell you what's restricted, what's not restricted, what's, what we've set aside, what we haven't set aside, what we have committed, what we haven't committed, and that's work she's gonna need to do. The yeah. auditor's not gonna be able to do that. And, and we're actually gonna have to tell the auditor so that it's represented correctly in the financial statements what that is. So mm -hmm. she's not gonna have a whole lot of time because that's not, they don't come up with that. We have to tell them. Right. No, I understand. And when I when I talk about FY19, I'm talking about the appropriation, not the, the fund balance. I consider that to be a revolving. But they have to report that in the financial statements. Right. And one of the things that they report is what we have committed and what we don't have mm -hmm. committed. And that's an important number for the public. Mm -hmm. um, and so and right. So, um, you know, from that aspect, you know, that is going to be important for her to get a handle on that pretty quickly. So uh, just just know that. Um, there is help out there, and, and if, if, if she needs it. I mean, if you it, feel you want to bring, I, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. If you want to bring the help in now, I'm not adverse to that. I just, 
again, I want to figure out if it's value added. Mm -hmm. but it's, so I, I don't, I don't disagree. Um, and, and you probably can't do that until um, right. um, she gets on board. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I, like I said, I just wanted to express that, you know, as Jerry said, there is, um, that is one of the things that we actually are responsible for. It is. Yeah, <laughs> and we're still going to be. And, and, and honestly, the so focus will turn to finance very quickly here. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so just keep that in mind. Even Absolutely. even if it's FY twenty, helping with that or helping with the budget, um, to to take any kind of you know because it's so much is going to be happening so quickly, um, just keep that in mind that certainly this board is willing to reach out and get some additional help if we need it. We'll do. Okay. Any other thoughts or discussion, Elaine? So yeah. As soon as she gets on board, we'll talk. Okay. All right. So we will have a meeting on the 26th. If she starts the 18th, that'll be an opportune time for her to say hello. She comes crying. Well, she's in tears at the meeting. Well, <laughs> we'll know. Be we'll know. There's no crying. crying. In baseball. There's no hey. crying. In H. That, that's all we did was cry. All right. All right. Item 14H request approval of school furniture from Scott Mayflower. Yeah, so we were fortunate, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We were fortunate to uh, get a call from Scott Mayflower, a moving company that uh, moves a lot of furniture. And my, what I learned is that a lot of times when furniture is moved and it gets a scratch on it and something like that, it just left with the moving company. And uh, so they called us and said, hey, look, I've got a warehouse full of furniture. And, We'd like to donate it, and we said, well, we'd like to partner with you on that. So uh, I'm going to seek your approval tonight. I'm going to just show you a few pictures of what we've obtained. There's a numerous chairs like this, as you saw earlier this evening when you were in the uh, high school conference room. They're in there. I believe a set of these were also sent to the middle school. We've uh, uh, reformatted the office uh, in central office, so all the girls have brand uh, or desks. Most of these are brand-new desks, as a matter of fact, so you can see there. That's Christine where Dottie was, and Carolyn has a desk, and Ibis has a desk, so we've redone the office mm. there. Oh, you, did you get rid of the tall? Yep. Oh, all nice. The, Very nice. <coughs> no more cages. They'll let you talk to each other now. Nice. And that's the technology office, and so you can see a table to the left, and you can see Ms. Nagara, uh, Ms. Brochu in the back there with the uh, desk and tables there and chairs. And we have... Uh, uh, Ms. Don uh, Donnelly Roach's office, we have a brand new uh, table in there. I don't know why this is jumping, but we saw it briefly. There we go. And so we have a brand new conference table there. So we'll, we have our ad council meetings, some of the professional development sessions. And then lastly, uh, that is the tables. Where are we looking? That's in the main office, right? That's. Oh. So that's oh, what this is for. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. There's another one going up into his office. Miss Labrex is right next to her old desk is still there. Right oh. next to that. So she gets a new one too. Oh. We oh, still, nice. I believe, have some desks downstairs that are still, still on. Few that we and they just reached out to you? That's fantastic. I, I actually know someone who works there. Oh, that's terrific. It's good to have friends yeah. in high places. Nice. <laughs> Chris Scott, the owner of Scott Mayflower, is a old that's acquaintance. Terrific. So. That's terrific. What well, a nice gesture. Yeah, it was great. Sure. I will make a motion to... Uh, with gratitude. With gratitude <laughs> to thank him. Gratitude. Thank yeah. you. Could you send him something from send the board? Letter. Thank you. Okay. All, right, all those in favor of accepting? Okay. And thank you very much for that yeah. and we should be on item 14 something I cannot see 14 I. I there's only 26 letters so we can't go much further one to one parent and student handbook first reading I wanted to get this in front of your eyes not even for, for our first reading but just so you have a, a sense as we move toward the one to one uh, at our Next meeting, I'm going to have that as an agenda item to really give you a deep overview of where we are and when we're going to execute this and how we're going to execute this with student assemblies, parent assemblies, the devices themselves, and so forth. So this is sort of a precursor to that. I just wanted to, again, show you that we're doing a lot of deep thinking on this. We borrowed best practices from districts who've done this 
in the state and, and in other states. And again, we want to have a handbook to guide this so that everyone's on the same page with it. So in, in, in essence, you have that in front of you here today as a first glance, and uh, we'll bring it back to you in two weeks when we do a more detailed presentation so on if this. So we, if we do, when we read through that, if we have any at least preliminary questions, should we just email you? Yeah, absolutely, okay. yes. A lot of this is in the policies that you approved this evening. I just regurgitated it here, although there is some new information too. Yep. Okay. Thank you. We'll do that. Okay. That was easy. Uh, 15 announcements, scheduled meetings, reports. Uh, Ms. Black was at a RIAS meeting, I believe, not yeah, RISC. Just, um, Rhode Island Association of School Committee oh, meetings. It was on adolescent meeting? sexual and reproductive health workshop. I didn't give you backup because it's all online. You can look it up. And um, Amy will send it to you if you'd like it. She just got the uh, link from the uh, health and wellness meeting that we just had. A lot of really good information that you should look at. Uh, kind of upsetting, but it's, it's good information to have. And, and upsetting, this is in one way. What? And upsetting in what way? Well, statistics. On statistics. Like this, you know, like statistics on where we stand in Rhode Island with this situation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And then, uh, Ms. Farnworth, did you make the regionalization meeting? The regionalization meetings? meeting, yes. There was a meeting held at CCRI in Newport last week, uh, sponsored by a, a private group, the Citizens Exploring School Unification, which mainly... Is that what they're called, or is that... That's what they're called, yeah. Um, it, it was a panel discussion. Um, it, it included some some high profile and very respected <coughs> panelists. Um, one was uh, Christine Johnson, who's the assistant director of the Massachusetts Association of Regional Schools. Uh, there was Christine Lopes Metcalf, who was with the Ride School Building Authority. She's actually the CEO. Um, we had Tim Duffy, our friend from the Rhode Island Association of School Committees. There was also State Senator Louis De Palma and State Representative Marvin Abney, and the five of them really did do a fantastic job um, communicating to the audience of about a hundred or so people. Um, you know some of the pros and cons of re regionalization. Certainly, this discussion was most focused upon Newport and Middletown, but. Um, you know, it was the island, the island, the island, and, you know, one of the reasons I attended is really anything that that island does could have an impact on us, and I don't want us to live on an island, so I wanted to make sure that, you know, let's not keep our blinders on and just make sure we're listening to the conversations that are happening around us, and that was about the size of it. Is there a stated goal for the citizens exploring school unification? I don't know if it's a stated goal. I, I do believe that it, they are proponents of regionalization in one or more forms. Um, it, it's, I won't say, it, it's a group of taxpayers from those communities who are, who are really, you know, looking at the, certainly the financial pluses for especially those two communities. Um, you know, we all know Rogers High School has its issues, and how we all know Newport is is has been actively searching for dance partners in to regionalize. And I think this particular group of people um, is definitely uh, leaning toward that. They, there was a joint school committee meeting. Um, of the three communities, Newport, Middletown, and Portsmouth, a couple weeks back, and they did take an official stance that they wouldn't be at this time um, pursuing regionalization. Um, the three the school, school committees, committees together. Um, but that's not to say that the conversation is over, and, and certainly anything, you know, that they, should they decide to do something, we want to make sure that we're, we're hearing and you know we, we always want to make sure that we're looking out for the best interests of um, the students and the families here in Tiverton. So it, there, there actually is another one of these panels going on tomorrow night. I think there's 
what, 14 different events going on tomorrow night. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I won't make that one, but they'll be doing another panel tomorrow with a little different uh, emphasis. So, you know, kudos to the group. They, they're well organized and, and uh, they're bringing in some, some great speakers to speak to it. You know, again, the panelists last week not only spoke to the pros, but the cons as well. You know, I, I found Tim Duffy to be very well spoken. He's got a, a long history of um, regionalization efforts around the state. You know, we all know some communities that have done that. And he, he really did a great job of just, you know, stating the facts, the pluses, the minuses, and, you know, all good things for, for people to know. So you'll keep us your eye on this for us? I absolutely will. Do they have anybody from Bristol Warren or Foster Gloucester? Not no. on the panel. Be interesting no <laughs> they did refer to them a couple times yeah. but um, no and certainly I wasn't there on the panel either I was just in the audience listening okay thank you uh, and then we have our sort of I will not be here on the 26th okay have fun. So we had talked about the 19th. That didn't really work. Yep, I that's think fun. it's probably not feasible at this point to try and move it to the 12th. So I think we're stuck for the 20th. Not nope, stuck, that's but. Fine. All right. Okay. Anything else that anybody wants to see on the 26th or okay. the I'm 10th sure Dr. Sankioni will send out those things so I can sort of play catch up. Yep. And we only have one meeting in December, is that right? That is correct. Christmas Eve. 24th. <laughs> I'll be here. I can imagine you would. Yeah. All right. Any other announcements? Okay, I'm going to ask for a motion to re enter executive session under the previously cited statute. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. 